Hey there, lovely soul. I'm Infinity and welcome to the May 2021 Libra Sun, Moon, or Rising. Of course, cross watchers, welcome, welcome. You could be dealing with a Libra. So, uh, wow, <laughs> cards are jumping. Uh, I'm Infinity, a shaman, mystic, psychic, physical empath, medical medium, channeler, astral meditation guide, ascension coach. I read Terran Oracle. I'm a distance quantum healer working with people worldwide. And I offer a lot of services on my website, thehealingbetterfly.org. I encourage you to check it out and see what I could do for you as well as well as there's pod there's my podcast i have um free ebooks uh channeled astral guided meditations for you so please check that all out i also have a special on mediumship through the 15th of may so check that out if you're interested in mediumship work it's one of my very favorite things to do let's turn over these cards and we get one more here. So many just fell out. We're going to get started here with the uh, Lightseer's Tarot. First card out, the Emperor. Second card, Page of uh, Swords, right? Yeah, <laughs> Page of Swords. Let's space there for a second. The Ace of Wands came out in reverse. Sorry, the Ace of Swords came out in reverse. Ace of Swords. Uh, and then the Star in reverse. And then the Three of Pentacles in reverse. And then the Ten of... Sorry, the Six of Cups in reverse. So I'm going to check in here just to make sure that we are in reverse with the ones that are. Okay, I'm turning over the Ace of Swords. So I just got that. Turn over the Ace of Swords. Um, okay, we're keeping the Star reversed. We're keeping the Three of Pentacles reversed. And we're keeping that Six of Cups in reverse. So Libra what i'm getting here let me tune in here for a second okay so what i think is going on here is you really feel pushed and guided to learn new things to connect deeper to go within to meditate um you feel like you're a, an earth angel or a star seed you're just trying to make sense of what's coming through and there's a lot of energy coming through um possibly having a hard time feeling grounded you may be feeling influenced by others energies it's hard for you to clear or you may even feel like you have maybe um attachments to you in some way um there's there is a bit of that um so what's interesting here is that we have the first three cards right side up and then we have the second set of three cards in reverse and they're to stay that way so there's this interesting flow of energy that's coming in and these cards here the star that's how it looks straight up let me get it closer the star the three of pentacles and the six of cups are in reverse over here because they're a little further out in time than where we are right now um the star energy you're gonna be getting to this it just isn't here now and this is really representing um at least in in this in this reading you know clarity of your information from the divine is what i'm hearing because it's like there's a lot coming through a lot of light codes and energy ascension energies connection with spirit with your soul um you are very much guided by the angelic realm coming through here as this divine masculine the emperor but i'm feeling like real guardian angel um 
archangel energy with this and then this three of pentacles is just kind of more direct clear communication with your guides and guardians and that is in reverse as well as the star and then the six of cups again representing a very in tune connection with your guardian angel with your with your guides and guardians in general so um it's just a matter of time is what i just heard it's just a matter of time and because you're actively working on it you're actually like you're working on it uh libra you're just you're like look um if i want to know i've got to put the time energy and effort into it and you're right that's just the way that it works you need to go into meditation you need to do energy healing and clearing you need to cut cords you need to be in nature you need to use crystals you need to um create and that's what I'm getting here is that you're in the process of getting this information the process it's like ingredients in the cauldron and you're like putting it together it's not anything yet but it will be it will this recipe will turn into something really awesome a lot of connection here with your three your six and your three six of cups and three of pentacles there's a lot you see this there's a lot of connection here um that man up top with that green shirt um it is like talking down like from higher perspective talking down to you in the physical same thing with that six of cups we've got there with it with that deep connection um guardian angel connection so we have like ancestors we have archangels we have um and especially your guardian angel guardian angel energy coming through big time but governed and um led by this uh archangel i'm really feeling either metatron michael depending on who you are depends on kind of who you gravitate to and towards i'm feeling gabriel michael metatron uriel um so so could be one of them doesn't have to be could be all of them um but definitely archangel energy pushing you look at these two together he's like whispering in your ear don't get stuck on um on gender here this would be you and you're and he's just saying you know go 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 let's connect let's let's you know follow your guidance whatever that is if it's watching videos reading blog posts reading articles meeting with people um books like any of this stuff okay libra let's get into your archetype cards it's really cool what we're doing for these readings guided to use the uh wild unknown archetype cards separated by their uh their groups, which is the selves, the places, and the tools, and then the initiations or the theme of what we're, what's going on right now for you to pay attention to. Whoa. I'm not taking any of those. Um, I am taking this one, though. <laughs> there it is. Um, so we're starting off with the self card. I'm going to keep that. It's, it's down. I'm going to keep that down um until we're, we got them all then we're gonna get our is this the places no oh yes wait that doesn't go there that goes there okay glad i saw that okay so these are the places Places. Okay. Then the tools. Oops. 
And then the initiation. I'm excited for this. Very excited. Oh! Still face down. Okay, let's see what we have here. The Mystic. The Mystic is the self. The womb is the place. Oh, wow. The womb. And then we have the, uh, the tool is the vowel. Oh, these are so deep. And then um, apocalypse. Okay, apocalypsis, I should say. Okay, where's my book? Let's get into it with the mystic from the top. Oops, there it is. The mystic, the seer, the light worker, the dreamer. The mystic is often misunderstood in our culture, depicted as a wandering and lighthearted day, daydreamer. Yet, like Shiva, the true mystic plays a critical role in society, remaining fearlessly dedicated to the path of transformation. In order to save the earth from darkness, Shiva swallows the poison of the world and holds it in his throat, slowly transmuting the liquid into nectar. This is the work of the mystic. They do not fear darkness, but rather sit in the presence of it, harness the potential and latent energy behind it, and embed it with light. They are patient and prudent change makers, seeking growth above all else. Unanswerable questions are the mystic's lifeblood. The mystic revels in mystery and the great riddle of life dancing with the forces of light and dark upon its wings when light remover of darkness visionary ageless when dark expects results seeks attention and recognition okay so definite deep connections here and um and I refer to myself as a mystic, so I definitely relate to this. Um, and the understanding the, or the misunderstanding of mystic and what that means. And truly what a mystic means and how I define that for people when they ask me, like, what does that mean when I say shaman and mystic? Well, shaman is one that travels within the, the realms and dimensions of, um, of spirit in different ways to connect with spirit for healing, for understanding. And a mystic is somebody that lives from a place of faith um and goes as guided like lives a hundred percent as best as we can with that all in it's very similar to like a nun or a priest the mystic is extremely faithful really relies on the divine and incoming information for all that we do whereas most people really come from the center of self and making decisions and all of that a mystic kind of takes their self out of it and goes with the flow of energy it's not easy um, to do that you really have to keep playing that role of that zero card the fool over and over and over again and again and again because everything is this faithful endeavor as the mystic and you are being guided like i said you have this star here there's these deep connections with spirit and spirit guides like i told you from the beginning archangel michael coming in or and one of the archangels or all of the archangels a lot of incoming light codes and energy at this time and in may we have a we have major portals going on we have the 11 11 portal pluto is in retro grade we have the um the uh, lunar eclipse for the full moon at the end of the month so there's so much of this energy in to lift us into a higher state of consciousness and connection okay let's go to the womb and read about the womb One fifty-five. 
Whoopsie, went too far. Okay, the womb, next card. The nest, the belly, the origin. Everything has an origin story. The womb archetype asks us to contemplate the beginning beyond the beginning, the mother beyond the mother in a world that often negates the power and necessity of feminine principles. This card returns us to the warmth, tenderness, and sacred intelligence from which we came. It is a card of receiving, not achieving, of accepting love from the mother of us all. She is the life-giving force that forgives and cherishes even the most wounded and disparate soul. No matter how lost you are, the womb awaits your return to help you heal and grow. This card is a call to keep things simple, to return, to be reborn in the name of love. The womb is everywhere. It is beyond gender, beyond time. We are within it as it is within us. And when light, nourishment, harmony, warmth, love, when dark, uh, strict, stricken, uh, ecological crisis, infertility, imbalance. Man, those are tiny, tiny little words. <laughs> so... You're definitely being guided to a an like the deepest connection with Mother Gaia here. Um really, really deep connection here to go back to your soul origin. Like remember who you are on a soul based level before you incarnated here in this lifetime. The more you choose to understand yourself as an incarnate light being high level soul, the more you'll remember these things, the more the Akashic records can come in, the more your guides can talk talk to you and give you vision and I feel like whoever this is for the people that this is for that you have such intense psychic abilities and awareness telepathic as well your Claire audience Claire cognizant Claire sentient Claire voyant you've got your maybe even um uh Oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called right now. <laughs> and I'm working on an article for all the clairs. <clears throat> but you could even pick up on energy stuff you touch and what you taste or taste things in your mouth. I mean, your ability um, and smell too. That's the other one. Um, I just can't remember the, the word for it right now. And I don't want to sit here and think too hard on it. But you're very, very psychic with with all of the clairs they may not be all like super powered up yet but you have the potential and that is what you were born to do the womb is kind of telling me like let's go back to birth beyond birth to when you weren't even in your mother's womb anymore and what you are on a soul base level i can't tell you through this reading what you are on a soul base level but you're some type of incarnate high level um, light being incarnate that is figuring this out at this time, Libra. Um, wow. Okay. Now we have the vow. <laughs> Imagine that high level incarnate with a vow. Hmm. That never happens. <laughs> That's hilarious. I cracked myself up. Okay. The vow. Here we go. The promise, the oath, the contract. When the vow is spoken, the air shifts. Karmic ties are formed and destiny tilts on its axis. Our words and intentions have immense power. There is a reason the great uh, mythic stories of our past often include the uh, recitation of oath. I can't say that word right now. When we recite, I'm having a hard time with that word, um, the, of oaths and the mixing of drops of blood as a mark of union. The tricky part is that receiving the vow, or sorry, reciting the vow, no matter how casually, activates the external and unseen forces of the world. I'm going to read that again. The tricky part is that reciting the vow, no matter how casually, 
activates the eternal and unseen forces of the world. The ancestors bear witness. The ancestors bear witness. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh my god, the energy right now. The laws of nature respond. These promises cannot be unsaid or forgotten. So breaking them can leave lingering complexities and loose ends. This card calls us to acknowledge the vow we are living by consciously or unconsciously and either recommit to it or create a ritual that signifies its closure. We've been underestimating the power of, you've been underestimating the power of your promises. And when light bearing witness to the shift towards destiny, mm -hmm, and unconscious vows, unkept promises, and messy karma. So I'm feeling like there could be both of these things going on for you, Libra. To be quite honest with this vow, um, the vow card uh, talking about destiny, talking about remembrance, talking about manifestations that you're really quite potent with. You just haven't tapped into all of that yet. It's like sometimes it's like instant. Some, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you, you're not quite sure of your manifestation. That just popped in. But anyway, the vow here signifying your, um, who, like, along with the womb it's like this is this is talking about destiny this is talking about what you are on a soul based level and and that vow is speaking more to well it's speaking to two things let's start with the first the first thing is your your destiny your soul mission the um the the kind of the way that your plan was put into place of who and what you are and what you are to do in the physical once you um were born and got of age and you know go through your process of understanding remember the mystic the mystic is extremely um <laughs> magical connected to so many layers of creation for a reason we are put here to um to literally pull people through the veil and uh, the first person we need to pull through the veil is ourselves and the vow is rem is reminding you that you promised yourself to pull you through and this is the time that it's happening. Holy shit. Intense. Wow, these readings have been so intense. Okay, and Apocalypsis is your initiation card. So, here we go. <laughs> like I just said, pulling yourself through the veil. So, here we go. Removing the Veil of Deception is the title here for Apocalypsis. Removing the Veil of Deception. And I, trust me, I did not remember that. Apocalypsis indicates a particularly painful time. One that unfolds when two disparate dynamics occur simultaneously. Pulling the psyche in seemingly opposite directions. The first is a lifting of the veil. This means truth that have been kept in the dark are revealed, seen, and unearthed. No matter how relieving it is to witness them come into light, an element of despair and grief follows. Excuse me. Oh, wow. The second dynamic is regeneration that comes from the wreckage of the revealed truth. The regeneration that or healing if you will that comes from the wreckage of the revealed truth the old narrative breaks and a new story forms apocalypse apocalypsis energy is similar to a to a forest fires devastation for the sake of regeneration the veil lifts and we see who and what has been hiding who are you? What are you? Why are you here? Needs to be answered. And you have the answers. From the nakedness of the truth, a child is born. Remember the womb? 
have faith in the process hold on to your center that is the only way mystic like i said that's the that's the the foundation of the mystic is the faith and passing through the veil and being that fool in faith over and over but it's it can it's it's harder in the beginning because there's no foundation there to help to like of the past to help you the past has broken the who you thought you were is breaking apart you still are you the personality the experiences you know the feelings the history the traumas the abuses the love the joy all of that is still you but your understanding of who you are is breaking and fracturing and ending so you can see beyond that into the new the the next step of your evolution so intense huh. when light the unknown becomes known and guides the way when dark and now uh fatalism hopelessness um annihilation type energies like that like when it's more like depression over what's lost than excitement over what's new and what's coming i don't feel that energy for you libra i feel that it's like more of a readiness here even if there is apprehension in the process that's going on for you but you are um you're in process you're in transition again these energies that are coming um coming forward for you in um in may are I'm trying to get to my all my oracle cards here here we go we're going to use the fairy oracle i already know it uh so what's needed now is uh a settling in is what i'm hearing settle in for change put forth the energy the effort the time to give yourself allow for this transformation to take place follow work with hire be mentored by people who have been through it before this is kind of my bread and butter so if you're guided to work with me on your evolutionary process and bringing all of this stuff in for you please don't hesitate <laughs> um it's kind of what it's kind of my passion so anyway we're gonna be getting a uh wild wisdom of the fairy oracle card here to round out your reading libra oh i love it when that happens you see that fall right out there it is what do we what do we get with my better fingers cry for nature morning for something sacred which seems lost interesting the eight card cry for nature okay let me grab my book i'm not familiar with this card but i'm very very intrigued this is a fairly new deck for me and i was not guided to go through each card and know what's all in the deck sometimes i am but sometimes i'm not and this is one of those decks where i was just guided to not like i connected with the whole deck of course but i didn't get into each card so sometimes it's like that i'm not guided to do that so this is one of those decks okay so um but we do have another infinity symbol with the um and when I say another, the the vow had that infinity, had that that connection. So here we go. Mourning for something sacred which seems lost. You can see how sad in the fairy being here is and how she weeps for what which was cut down before it had time its time had come. Yeah, she's so sad that this tree was taken god that's me when a tree gets taken down jeez i cannot even think about that right now um <laughs> seriously um 
which, uh, which was cut down before its time had come. This old tree represents knowledge and all that once was held sacred and secure as it was once the home of this fairy. Now with its destruction and murder, she faces a time of deep grief. <laughs> Is this making me so emotional? <sighs> When something that feels like a part of you has been taken away well before its time has come, the grief you feel must be honored and expressed and felt for the healing, for the healing to take place. There is no shame in weeping for what, what which seems lost. The tears are the water that brings new life, so do not feel you must hold back. This card indicates deep sadness and inner frustration on behalf of the questioner when confronted with the uh, enslavement of the environment, animals, marine life, and elemental life to man's needs. The effort to overcome these in institutionalized brutalizations of our flora and fauna of the earth, Gaia, can seem so very, very great and can take so much energy. It's true, it does. Whew. You may feel as you might as you fight this good fight that you are barely making any progress at all and that you are restricted and thwarted and overwhelmed. But the efforts you make will do more than change things. They will make you very strong and you will be sending a ripple effect through our world, often without even knowing Who you have inspired. Do not underestimate the impact you can have. And divinatory meanings. This is the card of the person who loves where they are. This planet. This person may be passionate about animals, nature, trees, and protecting the earth. This person realizes they are as a child when faced with the ageless wisdom of all the creatures of this wonderful blue and green planet human wisdom is but one form the being who has shown who has drawn this card is one with great elemental energy who can help rid the environment of toxic poisons and environmental pollutions you will be passionately interested in helping the environment to be healed in the same way you are able to help heal toxic energy in places or in others you may find you have a talent for clearing the karma of the environment this card is about the divine protection this matter magical planet enjoys from its special earth warriors yes the person this card signifies has this earth warrior energy this earth spirit in terms of the all who are attuned to this new earth energy and we all have this capacity regardless of age religion race creed family background or our issues has the chance to change into a, a person of the new earth now I'm going to read the reverse meanings even though it wasn't reversed. In this card's case, the reverse position simply ident intensifies the upright position. The sadness may have fueled a feeling of nihilism, one which many young people can experience, making them feel alien and to alienated angry and can lead to self-harming activities these young ones need to engage in meaningful activism to overcome their despair at the greed and the lies and they can clearly that that they can clearly sense all around them they also need good food plenty of physical activity and must be cautious of being medicated out of their activism if left without purpose, these young beings can find themselves lost with a belief that all people are untrustworthy, greedy, and materialistic. They must take action, become informed, be well, and raise their warrior voices to make meaningful changes that will help support this beautiful planet and all of her beings. So there you go. 
you are very connected. You're so connected that it can overwhelm you at times. You feel like you're too sensitive. You're not. You're just really tuned in. And the balance of negative and positive needs to come into a neutral. That's where healing takes place. So remember what we said. We have to pass through the veil so we can see for ourselves who and what we are and start to see the places in which we need healing. We all need healing. We all need to release energy we all need to clear energy especially us mystics us healers us seers people who are really spiritual connected with Gaia connected with nature connected with our guides and guardians we are to be the the most empowered using the most of our abilities within our heart center with our third eye um, with all of our chakras and connected to Gaia it's like just just it's just plain common sense the clearer you are the better receiver you are the better healer you are the better guide to others that you will be and you're in the process of figuring this out remember apocalypsis talks of an ending time this ending time for you libra is about is about you um coming into a new you a new beginning a new phase in your journey completely in such a different way like what i'm seeing here is like they're saying tell them to like in this moment that in a year from now you're gonna be like wow like remember my words here libra that this reading really signifies such a level up for you so so much guidance coming in for you and you are you're not running you're ready you're just in transition you're putting all the pieces together your third eye is opening 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 more and more and more you're coming you're starting to feel more at peace with your position of power and spiritual destiny and soul mission and there's just more pieces that need to be put together for you to help you you know understand and heal the places that are so hurt because we don't come into this without a lot of hurt a lot of physical emotional energetic pain every single one of us that are meant to heal others to heal Gaia to connect with spirit has this story yours isn't any different for me i was you know so physically ill i had fibromyalgia my whole life i lived every day in pain i was such a mess because i didn't know what was all up going on here that was this psychic physical empath i could feel other people people's energies feel in my body what people feel and get information from the ether and from spirit and there was so much happening in and around me i couldn't make sense of any of it and all it did is made me feel horrible sick in pain exhausted because it was just layer upon layer upon layer once i healed myself once i was guided to heal myself pretty quickly actually um it's a process, but it was quick also. Um, everything shifted. But also, even after that, it was a slower. It was not like right away. It was a process of coming into the new me. I was sick and in pain and living a desperate life for 40 years and then 10 years ago I was guided to heal myself very miraculously after a long chain of events that took me to that moment in that space and time obviously you don't just get dropped into a into anything it's a process everything is even if we're like it just happened no nothing just happens <laughs> nothing just happens everything is a process our perception is what rules our understanding of how things work but nevertheless once that happened i was like pain free i felt light i felt different than i had my whole life but i still didn't have the answers to much of any of it i had to figure out and go through a transition and aside from the, those on the other side that guided me i didn't have a person in the physical i wasn't guided to anybody i had to figure it out all by myself and that was my journey that was my destiny and it still kind of is i mean i i do and when i say all by myself i mean nobody in my life in the physical i read books i read articles i watched videos i was down every rabbit hole you can possibly imagine that i was guided through to 
p- piece it together for myself. And it, it's, <laughs> it's been very interesting, very, very exhausting, exhilarating, magical, you name it, it's been all of those things. And I can say and see that it's been the same for you, dear Libra. And you're on your way. Let's not forget this awesome star card. This means that, you know, so much, um, it's like the promises for your soul are being wrapped up in gifts and they're ready. They're almost ready for this party. It's just gonna take some more time and your effort to get there. Oh my gosh. But this is so awesome. Um, so I'm wishing you an amazing May Libra. Please um, take these messages and ruminate on them. Think about them. Um, just meditate on them. Um, and visit my website and see if there's anything there that can help further guide you. And of course, reach out if I can help you in a one-on-one basis. With that said, infinite love and blessings, dear Libra. Until next time. Bye for now. <laughs>